Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how I created a 3D model from orthographics, specifically on this No Two Ways sneaker. So to begin, I used orthographic views that I had, and I traced the profile view. From here, I went in and I grabbed, and I began to edit by using Smart Move. And that way, as you can see here, it's locked on planar. So if I turn planar off, I can move from side to side. And then I would use the top view to ensure that I was in the right position. So after doing this for a little while, I ended up with two sides. I have the medial side, which is the inside of your foot, and the lateral side, which is the outside of your foot. So you can see by lining up the side views and the top views, you can produce a pretty accurate result. This is commonly used in automotive design. So now that we have this scenario, we can begin by filling it in like a coloring book with surfacing. So now that I've done the same with the upper and using orthographics to make sure that I'm on the right path with producing the wireframe, what I've done is I began by modeling the tread. Now with the tread, I use the orthographic again on the bottom. So I'll go to tread orthographic and I can see specifically if I turn this down and flip it over, I can see how I used the sub D primitive shape in order to create this. And I can edit it and continue to go in and make sure that I'm getting the right shapes. After I did this, let me scroll down. I began by starting with the outsole. Again, I'm doing my best here to follow the red lines that I've produced. The midsole. And I created this kind of surface thickness by cutting through the object. So what I mean by that, I'll explain more in depth with the upper, but when you get that thickness, you can create it by intersecting the blue surface with the white midsole. After that, I went in and I started to produce this midsole section right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here, squeeze the trigger and use this bar on the left excuse me, the right, and now we can see more clearly. So I'm gonna turn off these wireframes on the bottom. You'll get an active invisible sign. So basically what that means is whatever active layer you're on is now invisible. So I'm gonna come down and I'll make my tread the active layer by squeezing with the trigger. Now I don't have that warning anymore. From here, I continue to go through and work kind of in teams or in layers with my upper. So I didn't want every single thing to be on the same layer with my upper because it's so complicated. So I made sure that with the upper, um, things are on different layers here. That way I can see more specifically if I turn my wireframe off, you can see again, I'm using that coloring book method in order to fill in the void, so to speak. So with um, working in layers on my upper, I can see how the different parts are interacting. Now regarding that cutting through look again, if I check out the inside of my shoe, you can see surfaces intersecting one another to create a simulated thickness. Next, upper C. So again, just you know, adding more layers similar to working in Photoshop or making a painting. And then finally, I create the tongue. Now I created a bathtub look here and what that enabled me to do is make it look like when you're checking the shoe out from here, particularly in a render engine, it looks like the shoe doesn't stop. Um, if you have a material that suggests that, it works really well, uh, as opposed to just having a hole in the middle of your shoe. So if we check it out from the bottom, you can see it kind of has this bathtub shape. Next, again, I'll scroll down. And then finally, I added the laces. And this is just a simple stroke tool. So you can see how adding and working in layers and particularly using a wireframe to create a coloring book, you can really fill in the lines and produce any type of geometry you're looking to make. You can check out final renders on my website at warrencherry.work.